junior designer or a junior marketer or a junior communicator. Uh, what we suggest them to do is to make an investment, even though they get some money for that, we never send people for free, but not enough to really su sustain themselves, and then uh, to establish their own business. We have a lot of examples of uh, alumni that either follow their career in the design path or not abroad, after a relevant experience in Italy, selling themselves much higher in terms of income, let's say, to be honest. So we have people doing uh, style.com in Indonesia or uh, as a manager and uh, as a main journalist. We have uh, senior designers placed in Bottega Veneta and in other brands. Uh, but also we have people like, uh, people that are not known in Italy, like a Korean designer, which is called Troy on Troy that after having been working in Italy for years for uh, an, uh, a studio that was doing consultancy for Diesel, has established his own brand in Korea that won three times the Samsung Design Award and now is a kind of a star, the style choice brand. So there are many different facets. It's difficult to range them. Also because we work internationally. There are also students from Korea or from China that then establish in Italy their own brand because we supported them, as the video was explaining before, as uh, most of our school do. So, it's difficult, it's really personal. It's not about the curriculum, it's not about uh, the assessment, it's not about the assessment on the diploma. One thing that we always like to say to the students is don't worry about the numbers, that people, when we see you, will be caring of how you deal with the, the, the project, and your portfolio. They, they, they will never ask you the assessment when you get out from school. So probably, the, the I didn't answer your question exactly, but the point is that it is really fragmented. And it is going to be more and more fragmented. We also have had people becoming musicians in Finland and doing video. This before the... Uh, arrival of uh, internet as it is today. So it's a creative domain. What we like to teach is design thinking, no matter which is the subject you're undergoing, from the starting from that perspective. Well, mm, I confirm everything. It's exactly the same. It's, it's, it's it. um, students mostly find the job for what they studied before or late, because they might start, like for example, a brand manager can start as a product manager and then become a brand manager. Or, uh, as fashion is one of the most complete domains, because fashion is about the humankind, it's about the society, it's about the industry, so it's really complete. And somebody says that fashion is dead, and because of that, probably it's everywhere. And it's also in computers, <laughs> in cell phones, if you only think that Apple is hiring managers from fashion. So when you study fashion, uh, you can also work in other industries, because one of the biggest trends in the world today is aesthetics. Everything must be aesthetically good, perfect, you know, well done, and so on. Um, then, the other question was about uh, e-learning, right? Mm, uh, look, uh, personally, I think uh, that fashion uh, is containing a lot of human society and industry, and being project-based should be face-to-face. should be face to face and working on the matter. Uh, like ancient Greeks, if you want. Um, I know that, you know, for example, when I was studying, teachers were kind of unreachable aliens, like superior entities, you know? And then fashion became commercial. If you want also the last commodity, or the last possible luxury for somebody. 
like buying a course was like buying a jewel, or instead of buying the car, I buy the course. Like, you know, parents and students evaluating how many uh, per item or per, per theme you are going to teach in school, or they have half, like, you know, super commercial. I think these two uh, ways to conceive fashion education are expired, finished. The next level of fashion education is collaboration. It's working together between students and teachers, between different schools, between different countries. So if the web can help that, I'm pro. If the web is to skip that, I'm against. Yeah, Barbara, thank you. And I would just uh, the same question about e-learning to Sarah, Sarah and Julia. Okay. We have some e-learning courses, but uh, they are actually for people that are already working in fashion industries, and so they uh, spend their time for at school, and then they can just do some training while they are already working. <coughs> and I think that this is uh, a good way. I mean, they, they really need to uh, live in a school. Also, as uh, we are going on and on going in Londres, as we all say, we have a lot of people coming from abroad. And also, the life together of these people that are living are uh, coming from different countries and sharing their oral culture is really very important. And this is kind of experience that can be made if you are learning at home with your learning. So I think that it's a good way that you need to you know, share your time together with all people coming from Russia or from China. They can really give you more than what we can give you on, at school. See, yeah. I totally agree with my colleagues. Uh, we tried actually to develop some e-learning courses. It was a sort of test, but we never actually launched anything because just for the way our school works, I think it's very similar to the other schools. We have no, we have classes with no more than 20 students and the coach, the teacher sits together with the students and we really set a sort of similar situation on what you can have at work. Co-working is very important and since we're talking about ideas, creativity, something that can be just here, Students really need to face another person or a group of people also giving feedbacks and also criticizing their works and to help them to see their works in an objective way, not just in a personal point of view. So I think that's something that uh, in the e-learning you cannot really uh, share so much as in person. Um. Вопрос о моде социальной. Несколько лет назад Россия, поскольку нужно было искать новые ниши, активно стала развиваться мода для детей с инвалидностью. Я сама, Альбина Бекулатова, я проектирую одежду для детей с инвалидностью, которые имеют нарушение осанки, для детей с детским целебражным параличом. И при этом а, направления проектирования разделились. Кто-то рассматривает в этом тренд социальный, как способ социализации людей с инвалидностью, как способ привлечь внимание к данной проблематике, как продвижение каких-то социальных проектов. Например, очень многие дизайнеры используют в качестве орнамента рисунки детей с инвалидностью. Второй тренд – это попытка создать из этого бизнес, создать способ проектирования одежды для детей с инвалидностью, которая была бы продаваема. И это направление в развитии универсального дизайна. Хотелось бы услышать ваше мнение. Видите ли вы этот рынок как сегмент? И какой именно сегмент вы видите? Социальный, как социальная реклама, социальное привлечение? Либо это может быть коммерческим сектором? Спасибо. Спасибо. When it comes to this kind of subjects, we have to use carefully words. Um, 
for a long time, um, ethics in fashion, and this is my personal opinion, uh, have been used just for marketing purposes. Justifying horrible stuff that was designed by people that were, didn't have any clue, but it was not possible to criticize because of that. On the other hand, you have to consider that fashion as a system has not been born to be ethic. It's exactly the contrary. It's about desire. It's about. It's not about garments. It's about status in certain countries. It's about self representation. It's about self identity. It's about how to project yourself through the society in which you live. This has nothing to do with ethics. At the same time, fashion has to do with society, as Danilo properly stated before. And society is changing. So fashion is dead, but fashion is born somehow. And we need to consider ethics that includes the, the work you've done, you're doing, as something that is related to fashion. Otherwise, there's no future. And this is going all the way also to sustainability and these other rules. So personally, I think it works, but um, probably the problem is not, uh, is the way things are stated, not the way that things are done. I will explain myself. You said, I am designing garments for disabled people. I was in Japan many years ago, and I went to, a, for my very first time, and I went to a mall, and I found an old department for disabled people. And I found the most beautiful design pieces ever. I got things for myself, and I was not disabled, just because they were beautiful. So probably the point is, having a starting point on the design thinking approach of the collection that allows people with disability to wear what you're doing, but why should you restrict it to that while it could be a tool to propose something different? If you think of the Japanese in the 80s, the great Japanese designers, they were designing for people after Hiroshima. I mean, the word of reference was that. And look at what they produced. So, why should you restrict that in the category? Why shouldn't you enlarge it as a fashion statement that takes under uh, consideration a process that is wider than, than that? I mean, this is just my personal opinion. Can I? Well, in fact, uh, I do agree once again. It's, you know, sustainability is a precondition. It's not a battle. It's something that belongs to ethics, which always has to do with aesthetics. And fashion has 